So back in September, I suddenly had an urge to build a PC under a hundred New Zealand dollars. But then I thought, well, this isn't enough of a challenge. So I set out to make a PC under a hundred dollars with brand new parts. But I stopped soon after as that was too easy as well. So then I thought, well, what could be more challenging than building a PC for under a hundred New Zealand dollars for brand new parts? Then it came to me. A laptop. Laptops, unlike desktop PCs, have to have a battery and a display, as well as everything else packed into a small portable case, to be considered complete. Now, this could have been as far as the challenge could have gone, but no, I decided to make my life hell. So I added more requirements. These requirements were that every part had to be brand new, while not exceeding 100 New Zealand dollars, and inside that budget I had to also account for shipping, and with that, I got started. In October, I finished my list, the total price was $98.31. I ordered everything, and after one month of waiting, everything had arrived. And now, the story continues. Well, time to put it together. So the first thing I did was install all the heat sinks onto the Raspberry Pi. So now I'm installing the battery as well as marking and cutting out areas where the ports need to go through. Now I'm doing the same for the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm securing the Raspberry Pi with zip ties so it doesn't slide around. I then used more zip ties to keep the other zip ties in place. Afterwards I cut off the ends of the zip ties and put tape on top of it so it's more comfortable to have on your lap. So now came the next challenge, I had to build a hinge system that would let me open and close the lid of the laptop. I went through a lot of ideas but in the final idea which I am doing right now, I ended up building a chain out of zip ties, since that's what I had lying around. I then also added another zip tie chain on the other side. Next I connected the jumper cables to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. Now I'm cutting out a hole for the screen to go through, and after installing the screen I needed some way to secure it, so I used some tape. After installing it though, it was too heavy for the top of the box, and it was going down too far so I had to tighten the zip tie chain. I then wired up the screen and tested it by turning it on. Everything was working fine. Now it was time for me to set up some drivers for the screen so that we could use it. We had a few problems, um, one of them being that I bricked the Raspberry Pi at a certain point, uh, but eventually I got it going. Now with everything working, the only thing left was to fix the cable management around the back of the laptop. So now that the build was finished, what did I get for $100? Well we got a laptop with the following specs. But what do these specs mean? Well, I ran a few tests to see how the Pi fared with different tasks. And here are my conclusions. So first I tried out some basic tasks. My first test was writing a document. Nothing the Pi couldn't handle and I didn't have any trouble writing. Except for the fact that I could only see four lines at any given time and that you had to scroll across the page to continue writing. Next I tried some basic drawing. No problem. My third test involved browsing the internet. However, I couldn't really draw a clear line as it really depended on how heavy the site was. When testing on YouTube, the laptop couldn't handle 720p video on YouTube, instead giving me a slideshow. However, at lower resolutions, such as 480p, the performance was much better. But can it run Crisis? Well, first off, no, because it's using an ARM architecture, and it's held back by other components. So what can I play? Well, there's Blind Tetris, where you can't see what you're doing. 
as well as Minecraft that has to be run on an external display and even that is wonky. And of course Doom, the old one, just to name a few. The last two of my examples have to be run on an external display as the refresh rate on the screen is way too slow. In conclusion, its biggest downsides are the slow CPU and limited RAM, as well as the terrible crammed space of the tiny monitor. But that can be easily fixed by plugging into an external monitor. The upsides are that it measures 16 by 16 by 3.5 centimeters and only weighs 265 grams meaning it is great for portability, and it is also capable of Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. Would I recommend this laptop? Well, if you really can't find anything you like for $100 and you feel like building something that can do basic tasks, then yes, yes I would. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and all that other stuff down below. Thanks for watching.